Hi, FTC teams. Lawton here, alumni from team 3208. And today I'd like to explain the different types of parallel bar mechanisms that could be used in FTC, particularly in the center stage game. So what is a parallel bar linkage mechanism? This is one of the simplest examples of it. You can see it consists of two bars that are at the same angle to each other, and then two linkages which connect them, which are also the same length. And so what this allows you to do is as this bar moves up and down, you'll notice that the end effector always stays parallel um, to the position that it was in. So no matter the angle, it's always parallel. Um, there's a few applications for this in FTC games. In the past, you'll see teams use this or even they'll stack a few of these together to be able to make uh, lift mechanisms to be able to lift game objects. In this year's game, you might see it would be useful for grabbing pixels up from the ground and then lifting them to drop them into the backdrop. But there's a few drawbacks to this, the biggest being that you're limited to less than 180 degrees of range of motion. In fact, in this one, you have not even 120 degrees. So there is a modification to this that proves more useful. This is a very similar design. You see you have these two bars that are parallel to each other, um, but this time you have just one linkage connecting them. And yet it can still stay parallel through the range of motion, and you'll now see you can do a full 360 degree rotation. Um, in fact, you can also do multiple rotations if that is of use. Um, and so the way this works is there is, instead of having a second linkage, there's two pulleys that are the same diameter, and then there's a belt connecting them. Now this probably isn't how you'd want to do it in the game. You'll notice there's not a lot of resistance to actually be able to just drive the end effector. Um, in the game, you'd probably want this to be either chain or uh, tooth belt, but this is a good illustration of what the concept is. And so now you can imagine something similar where your robot would have to pick something up from the ground it could then lift it up. In fact, you could even flip to the other side of the robot, which would help with cycle time where you don't have to now spin your whole robot around. And then you could drop it off. But it's not necessarily helpful that it's always in the same parallel position because you'll notice the backdrop is at this funky angle compared to the ground where you don't want to be dropping the pixels perpendicular or parallel to the ground. Um, and so because this, there's a modification that isn't commonly uh, done for these linkages but I think it'd be very useful for this season. And that's changing the pulley diameter on just one side. So you'll notice, compared to the original one, this pulley is about half the diameter. And if I swap them real quick. So this is with a new pulley and a new belt. And you'll notice now when I drive it, it no longer stays parallel, but it continues to have this um, kind of motion that uh, is based on the angle of this linkage. And so it stays, you know, perpendicular to the ground at this position. And then by the time I get to a 270 degree rotation, then this is nearly parallel to the ground. And this has a number of benefits, um, especially in this year's game where, like I was saying, picking up the pixel and depositing the pixel needs to be at two different angles. Um, you could imagine a robot where it would have some end effector like a claw that would be perpendicular to the ground as it's grabbing the pixel. And then it could rotate 180 degrees around and have the pixel parallel now to the backdrop where it's able to place it. In the case of this example, I have a 40 tooth and a 20 tooth chain that's configured in the same virtual four bar mechanism. If you're curious how I came up with those numbers, there's a pretty simple formula you can use. Here you'll see the ratio of the two gears is equal to two times the change in the arm angle minus the change in the end effector angle, all divided by the change in the arm angle, where all these measurements are taken in reference to the robot frame. In this case, some modeling suggests that I'd want the arm to be at an angle of about 195 degrees and the end effector to rotate about 300 degrees. Plugging it into the equation, I get a result of 0 0.46. Uh, you'll note that this gear ratio is less than one, which means that the uh, sprocket on the robot will be larger than the sprocket on the end effector. If it were greater than one, you'd have just the opposite. And so from this, I chose the closest gear ratios that I could find uh, that are available. In this case on Rev, you see that there's a 40 and a 20 tooth, which gets us pretty close to 0.46. I hope this video was helpful to illustrate how these virtual four bar mechanisms could be used in FTC. If you want to download the files for these, they're in the description. 
Uh, note that they weren't necessarily made to be used for FTC, it was just for demonstration, but hopefully it'll help give you an inspiration for how these can be implemented into a robot. And with that, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and good luck this season.